Newton's second law of motion. Namely, that the force is equal to A times M. Oh. I hope I triggered a lot of you people. Papa Flamby's Advent Calendar. Oh, I, 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 Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to the Advent Calendar. That was the old pronunciation. Well, it takes you back, am I right? To 20, 20 or something. So I was looking through my anal mechanics playlist and I couldn't believe my eyes. I have never once in my time on YouTube derived the law of conservation of momentum for the collision of two particles. Just didn't happen. I don't know why. And this is why we are going to do it today. And I hope you are going to enjoy the video. So the first thing that we are going to take a look at is what momentum actually is from a physical perspective. And for this, we are going to start with Newton's second law of motion, namely that the force is equal to A times M. <laughs> I hope I triggered a lot of you people. Okay, force is equal to <laughs> mass times acceleration, m times a. But here comes a fact in that holds universally in physics. Namely, that the acceleration is defined as the change in velocity over time, if you have discrete values. Or, infinitesimally speaking, that's the same as the derivative of the velocity over time. So, in other words, v dot. Now we can plug this definition into our force and what we're going to get is that f is nothing other than the mass of the object times a which is the change in velocity over time. Now the mass is a constant so what we can do is we can bring the mass inside of the differential operator giving us overall the change of mass times velocity where mass in our case for now is independent of time and this is where momentum comes in momentum of a particle is defined as the multiplication of mass and the velocity of the particle we call the momentum p in physics because the word momentum starts with p obviously so what that means overall we define the force as the change of the momentum over time, so p dot. So those were just some basics. Okay, with that out of <laughs> why scratch? With that out of the way, we can go over to Newton's third law of motion, which states that for each and every force acting from one object to another, the other object exerts an equal force but with turnaround signs. So in other words, let's take a look at two particles colliding elastically. This is what we are just going to assume for now, that it's elastic. So what they are going to do is at some point in time t1, the scenario looks like this. We have a mass 1 approaching to this direction with a velocity v1 and from this direction we have a mass number 2 approaching at the point t1 with a velocity v2. And those two particles are going to collide exactly at a point in time t2. When they collide elastically, m1 is here, m2 is here, then what's going to happen is, depending on the masses of the objects, they are going to go away from each other, they are going to diverge from each other at certain velocities, and I'm going to call those final velocities u1 and u2. Okay. Now, what I stated before, Newton's third law of motion states that if those two collide in some kind of way, then the force exerted by the first mass on the second particle, so F1 to 2, is equal to the same force but from the other direction, namely from the mass 2 to the particle 1. So negative F2 to F1. This is just what Newton's third law of motion states. And now we can plug all of our variables in. We know what the force of the first object is going to be. The force from the first object to the other one is going to be mass 1 times the acceleration of the first object. And this is going to be equal to negative the mass of the object 2 times the acceleration of the object 2. And yeah, this is just how physics works with Newton's laws of motion. And they work quite well in classical mechanics, let me tell you this, okay? It works in basically all cases. So now, 
what we are going to do is we are going to apply our logic over here because we want to somehow go to the momentum. So we want to relate our um, basically e equation which correlates our two masses or the forces from the two masses to the momentum. And what we need to do is we somehow need to get the velocity into here. Now remember, the force is nothing other than the differential of our momentum p. So how can we get to our momentum p? Well, obviously by integrating both sides. And how are we going to integrate both sides? Obviously with respect to t. And we are going to take a look at the time frame from t1 up until they meet to t2. This is what we are going to do. So we are going to integrate both sides with respect to t from t1 to t2. Same thing here, t1 to t2 dt. And now we are just going to use the properties that we have derived and the properties of the integral. Namely, the mass is independent of time, so we can bring it to the front using the linearity of the integral. So we get m1 times the integral from t1 to t2 off. And we have that an acceleration is nothing other than the change in velocity over time. I'm just going to call both of the velocities v here and then we are going to plug in the initial conditions and everything's going to be Gucci. So this right here is dv dt of dt and over on this side we track the m2 to the front so negative m2 times the integral from t1 to t2 of dv dt integrate with respect to t. Now if we integrate a differential with the same variable, the dt's are going to cancel out. We are playing physicist here, okay? They're not going to cancel out, but if we differentiate a function and integrate it once again with the same variable, you're just going to get back to the original function, you could say. Namely, in our case, what we are going to do is we're just going to integrate this differential one from dv, meaning we are going to end up with the velocity v. And the velocity v corresponds on the left hand side to the velocity of the first particle and the other velocity on the right hand side to the velocity of the second particle. So what we are going to get is m1 with v of t from t1 to t2 and on the right hand side we are going to get negative m2 with v of t integrate from t1 to t2. If we plug in our initial conditions we are going to get m1 times v of t2 minus v of t1 and on this side, negative m2, v of t2 minus v of t1. And now we just take a look at our sketch. Now let's take a look at the first mass. The first mass at the point t1 approaches with a velocity of v1. So this part right here is nothing other than v1. Now what happens at the point t2? Well, we switch our velocity around and the velocity at the point t2 is going to be u1. So this part right here is going to be u1. And vice versa, here on this side, we have at the point t1, at the time t1, the velocity v2 initially. And this right here is going to be u2. So if we now use the distributive property of the real numbers, we are going to get m1 times u1 minus m1 times v1 is equal to negative m2 times u2 plus m2 times v2. And the last thing that we are going to do is we are turn all the subtractions into additions. We are going to bring m2 u2 over on this side and m1 v1 over on this side, giving us in the process m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2 is equal to m1 u1 plus m2 u2. And don't forget, those are all masses times velocities. So meaning this right here is, at first we have a momentum of our particle one, but this right here is the initial momentum of the particle one. This right here is the initial momentum of the particle two, and this right here is going to be, then, at the very end, the final momentum of the particle 1 and also the final momentum of the particle 2. And what we basically have here is that the initial momentums, momenti, 
Momenta, whatsoever, the initial momentum of our um, particles is going to be preserved, namely they are going to be equal to the final momentum of our particles at the very end. And this right here is exactly the conservation of momentum basically. If we were to bring this to the other side, we are going to get that the difference of the momenti, is that the plural? I don't know. The difference of momentum is going to be equal to zero. Hence, zero is a constant. The momentum is going to be preserved. And this right here is the conservation of momentum law for two particles colliding. And you can use the generalized Newton's law, where it just states that the sum of all the forces from objects to one another is going to be equal to zero by also in including external forces. And you can go through the same argumentation where you just integrate the differential because the force is the change of momentum over time exactly here. It's basically just integrating this right here, where we have our forces being the sum of all the Fi's. And if you integrate this, you are going to see that all of this is going to be preserved, basically. But this right here is basically the proof for just two particles. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you did, don't forget to check out betonundholz.de, my website for handcrafted wooden products. So if you're still searching for a nice Christmas present for your loved ones, make sure to check it out. And until next video, I wish you guys a fabulous day. See ya!